Hmm. <sighs> oh no. Oh shit. <laughs> Punctuality has never been my strong suit, but welcome to the Idioms Guide Part 2. We're going to be covering floors 10 to 20 in this part. Now, if you're a little bastard and didn't check out the last video, be sure to do so. Because in that last video, we talked about things that are generally good to know, like how to fight, how to dodge, how to never dodge with the dodge button, and instead just sprint in the opposite direction, and then counter strike when you feel like it is safe to do so. Anywho, in this video, we're going to be covering every helpful tip and or thing that you should know when climbing 10 to 20. Now, let us start the Idioms Guide Part 2 to the Tower of Barbs. Now, my dear viewers, the most important thing for you to understand at this stage in the game is what the hell are decals, and why are they so fundamentally important. They can maximize your damage, your health, have fun little gimmicks, they can help you on your climb. But, there is one decal above them all at this stage in the game that is invaluable. It's called Poison Eater. That weird old lady who's stripping constantly, guess what? She actually has some value. Her value is, in her favoritest form, mushrooms. And so, along your climb, you'll find many of her favorite treats. Now, there are bronze mushrooms, silver mushrooms, and you guessed it, gold mushrooms. Um, each getting unlocked via every stage of uh, the floor range. So, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. Now, for Poison Eater, you are going to need that many shrooms <laughs> to sell her. Um, you find these shrooms just by wandering around every tower. It's a potential drop where a resource could be. Uh, pick up the bronze shrooms, take them back down, uh, store them in your storage box, and then just keep climbing. Now, as soon as you possibly can, try to get your hands on this amazing, amazing decal. Um, now, you might be asking, well, why is it so good? Why do I want it? Da, 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 all these things. Well, my dear boy, the first thing that you must know um, is that the decal essentially allows you to regenerate your health. Quite a bit of it, in fact. If you read the text, it simply says, um, when you are poisoned, a portion of the poison dot will be returned to you as health. Now, one of the other things you should note is you can pick up animals, specifically snails. Poison snails. So it goes like this. You put on the decal, you find a random snail, uh, you can walk into its poison with much, much ease, uh, you stomp on the, uh, the snail to, to let it flop over, you pick it up, you put it in your inventory, and then you just basically have healing on command whenever you want. You go into your inventory, um, click drop item, it will immediately drop with a poison cloud if you throw the snail, however, it does not do that, it'll take a couple seconds, but yes, uh, you essentially, if you're really low in health and you don't want to go back down to the bottom or whatever your reasoning is, <laughs> um, just stand in the poison cloud for a little bit, get poisoned, pick up said, uh, said snail, put it in your inventory, go along your merry way, and you'll start regenerating tons and tons of health. Now, there is something to note um, about this decal. Uh, we'll get into this in the later, later rounds, uh, but uh, it cannot be stacked. Now, you might be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Stacking decals. It's an endgame thing having to do with premium decals. It's, uh, just don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not important right now. What's important is that you're constantly having a full health because you're going to be trying to learn each weapon type on this floor range. In fact, that's something that you should take with you throughout every floor range. A uh, new weapon, try to memorize how it works and where the opening is with said weapon. Another thing to note is these. These things are just death traps. Uh, be very, very careful when doing them or going into them. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not a good time. Uh, they're made to kill you, so whenever you jump in, be ready to fight, <laughs> and fight hard. Uh, now, weirdly enough, these things are annoying when you're first starting out, but when you're at endgame, they become worse, so, you know, count your blessings there. Uh, this is just something where you're gonna have to bite your tongue and move through, but uh, for memory serves, it was not as bad as it is now, uh, where I'm at endgame, shit should be thrown at you. Like, by the dozen. It's a bad time. It's a bad time. And of course, I believe I said this in the last part, but I'll uh, go into it more here. Well. It's very, very, very crucially important, and not so much now, when we get to the next floor range, that's where it becomes brutally apparent, uh, but it's good to start now, um, and that is to upgrade your weapons now. And please, for the love of all that is good, choose one weapon and stick with it until you have that weapon mostly leveled up, and then dabble. But always make sure you have a nice, strong armor set and weapon that you're going to before you start branching off and taking them. So make sure you get something to 100% or at least as much as you can without the ingredient that is from the next floor range. 
uh, because yes, it is so crucially important that you do that. If you start to kind of spread yourself thin, you'll get punished severely when you get into the 30th uh, floor range and more so on the 40th and down floor range. So, yeah. <laughs> May be careful <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oh, uh, but yes, I would highly suggest two weapons uh, I really like the pickaxe. It's an unstoppable weapon meaning no matter uh, Even if you could hit you're still gonna land your hit uh, So especially with the poison eater this really works in tangent You're always gonna come out on top and if you have a bloodsucker or mosquito that lets you uh, health steal It's a very high a damage weapon So you should be able to get out on that on top and of course the iron uh, these two weapons to me are the thing that carried me through most of these floors. In fact, uh, until I got past the 20th floor, I mainly just used my fist. Because uh, it's, it's unlimited durability and it's I had quite a bit of patience. <laughs> and yes. Also, couldn't tell, fully abandoned the annoying accent at this point. Uh, I think we're all grateful <laughs> for this, but uh, yeah, let's move on. Oh right, okay, this is single-handedly the most important thing that I could tell you. And it's so painfully annoying. Because <laughs> I feel like everyone got to this point and we're like... What? Because throughout this time that you've been playing, you've been taught to just go up, 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 up. But, finally, when you get to, I think, the 11th floor, um, you have to go back down. Unlock a door, and that allows you to go back up. Uh, so that is something to, to consider. So, oh man, I don't even, it's been so long. <laughs> Shoot. I think you get to the 12th floor. Basically, um, you'll get to a floor that's locked, and you can't go any higher. Uh, so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to basically go around, come back down, fight a boss. His name is Gato, and he'll become a bastard later on in the game. But for right now, he's pretty easy. Uh, go ahead and fight him. Just hit him a bunch. Uh, circle back around. Go higher. And then at that point, there'll be an elevator above you. I don't want to spoil anything, but basically that's how it is. If you need further explanation, boom, just type it into YouTube, Google. You'll be safe. That's what everyone did when this problem happened. <laughs> because everyone was like, what the fuck, where do I go? Anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. Ba bam And there is but one more rule I can think of that I completely forgot to uh, talk about. So if the audio sounds weird, that's because I'm editing right now. <laughs> Anyways, um, the one other thing that I could massively suggest to you guys, and it's, it's probably single-handedly the best room in the entire game, um, and that is the pill bug, which yes, you get access to right now. As soon as you break through the 11th floor, you have access to a pill bug. It's essentially this giant centipede thing that actually is pretty difficult to get into. Uh, so what you want to do with the pill bug is if you try to break it right now, it will just flop about. It won't actually die. And if you hit it with fire, then it's just going to cook it. You want to actually get its death shroom. So how you're going to get that is you're going to lock on to the pill bug um, and then get close. There's this wiggle room that you need to get where you're barely able to activate the button to stomp. And that's what you want to hit. And hopefully, if you hit it, he'll drop on his back and start flailing. Now this is when you can take hockey stick, a nail gun, a uh, hand cannon, switchblade, or a knife, um, and stab it. You basically want to kill it. And if you do it right, boom, bam, you now have this weird stick shroom. Now the reason why this is so good is because it gives you a second life. And more or less allows you to tank any damage from one single hit. So say if you're dealing with a person that's massively over level, like a hater, that just puts so much damage on you that it would two-shot you, but it only hits once, then you'll be able to survive that. As it reads, you take fatal damage and you get all the way back up to 50% health. So this is amazing to have. So much that they've actually nerfed pill bugs a little bit, so you'll see them a little bit less, uh, but that just means to take them while you can. Uh, my dear viewers, <laughs> uh, that is kind of it. I have lost the axe. I don't even know what I was doing last time, <laughs> but... Uh, yes, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Not too much for floor 1 to 10. Uh, you'll probably, I don't find the boss fight uh, for floor 20 that unforgiving. Um, essentially, he's more mechanic, he's more level based. So he has like sequences that you just have to complete, i.e. I detonating. I don't want to spoil it, <laughs> but stuff that you can get done uh, with fair, with fair bit of ease. Uh, and basically, the one thing with combat that's so is hugely apparent um, in this game is get a fair bit of distance from your attacker and just sprint circle around him and then just lay off the sprint if you're starting to lose stamina and get, regain stamina but basically just circle people like a shark uh, same thing happens with boss fights I feel like this is just just generally a good move just consistently keep circling them that way their attacks have a less and less chance of actually hitting you um, and all all that stuff uh, but again if you guys missed the last video because you thought well fuck it uh, I don't need to see what happens for 1 to 10 because I beat the hell out of that level we do talk about the general fighting mechanics like how you should never dodge but instead sprint away uh, because it just ends up being better in general uh, and yes uh, my name is Logan and Frost hopefully there'll be a guide for 30 to 40 
I don't know, 20, 20 to 30, and then 30 to 40. Hell, it may even be conjoined, uh, because they genuinely have the same thing. And so, in fact, that'll be a video where I can tell you guys a lot of a lot of things that hopefully could help you throughout your climb of the Tower of Barbs. My name is Logan Endo Frost. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you, hopefully, at the top.